<laughs> we need clockwise phase rotation instead of clockwise. So class twos with really declined profiles, most of them need clockwise to bring the chin down. Uh, class threes, like this guy, happy guy, 19, class three. His brother is twice as big, so his jaw is like out there. Uh, deep bite, right? So his overclose is like this, so that's why his chin is uh, so far. His lower third is collapsed, and uh, this is his overjet. About 16 millimeters when he opens the mouth a little bit. So again, lasering the face, you see those uh, red lines right there, so I laser his face, put the dots, mark it. I ask him to um, uh, look for it, so in straight, so look for symmetry, there's a little bit of chin symmetry. But he, he's also, so you see when we scan them, this is the CT scan, so when we scan them, you see there's the same laser dots in the scan when I trust them. So this scan I, I take myself because I'm there for that consultation. Post-ops, you know, if, not, if it's not Paul, my, my best assistant, you know, who does this all the time, then it's, uh, it can be anywhere. But uh, that's this guy's scan, he has to be adjusted a little bit. Uh, his joints are totally fine. Uh, those people, most of the time, they have humongous low, uh, joints there. So we're not afraid of resorption uh, there. And uh, that's his bite, you can see. Uh, again, 2D planning in the beginning, because the mom wants to see how it's going to look like. So we tell him, oh, it's going to look like, like this, approximately. Again, let's look at his uh, SNA. It says it's normal. 84 degrees, SNA. Uh, SNA is the uh, is a cella nasium A, A point here. So what, what, what does it mean? It, that means if it's uh, normal, that means your upper jaw is in the correct position. Well, we're moving his upper jaw 10 millimeters forward, 10. His lower jaw is getting set back only 2 millimeters back. So it's not a lower jaw major surgery, it's upper jaw forward, huge. That's how he looks after surgery. That's how he looks uh, a few months later. So belts and suspenders, two piece with four. Elastics, bite. So he has uh, two congenitals missing incisor right there. So uh, ideally you want those be a little bit longer build up so you get that overjet because right now he is but he has good cusps so I, I didn't complain but usually we like to send them to the um, uh, to the doctor to build those up with composites a little bit so this is incisions incision for the chin uh, this is incision for the upper jaw so this is a small incision that's this, there are his eyes right there so that's all we need to get that uh, surgery done uh, and uh, that's all we need to do uh, the um, for the lower, and this is a small incision for the um, uh, for the uh, sagittal split osteotomy. And uh, ne nobody ever complained on the pin right there. So they always like I, I I always forget to tell them I do it, and they say, oh, there's a stitch there, and I said, well, I don't know, I have to put a little pin in there for him. Okay, skeletal. Again, so this is. This is a uh, clockwise rotation, not counterclockwise, but clockwise. We want to clockwise it uh, to uh, open up the face, derotate the face. Look at the jaw setback right there. It's very small, very small. So his jaw length is very similar to what it, what it was. I didn't really move it much. It was maxillary advancement, huge. So if we would plan the cephalograms, based on how we were taught in uh, dental school, will be completely off. So never treat the models, never treat the, uh, never treat the SEF, never treat the scans, treat the patient. <coughs> That's his uh, 3D, look at the maxillary advancement. So it's two piece, you can see two different colors right there. We extended the jaw so it matches the lower. We did the lower jaw first, on this case as well, and small chin. <coughs> 